Next Level Church, we get the opportunity to worship God together. Online family, we love you. Come on. And I was buried beneath my shame. And who could carry that kind of away? It was my dream to love me. says that God gave him the name above all else, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. So I want to invite everyone as you're able to raise your hands to heaven. And online family, let's declare that we want to speak his name. Because I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there's peace. 
I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus Oh, let's see it over I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break This is your day, that's what you're facing Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause, Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Oh, we pray that you break Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire Oh, let's go! I just want to speak the name of Jesus Nations with our faith as we sing. Shout Jesus from the mountains and in the streets. Oh, in the dark. Jesus over my family. Come on, parents. Come on, grandparents. Parents to be. Spouses, let's sing over. Let's sing his name. Because he's the name above all name. Let's sing it out. Now Jesus from the mountains Oh, Jesus in the street Oh, in the darkness He's the light Over every enemy Lord, I sing Jesus for my family Has been the holy name Come on, that line is the clear Cause your name is power Your name Let's believe the truth We break every strong All addiction is falling down Oh Lord, I believe it Open like a fire Come on, we're gonna sing it with all the faith that we have Cause your name, your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Over my family, over my body, God Break every strong I don't know what we came in with today, but I guarantee you that we're going to leave differently today. Come on, can we give God one more shout of praise, believing that he is working? And as you do that, go ahead and let's put a smile on our face and turn and greet our neighbors. Come on, let's give them a, a high five. 
Online family, we love you so much. Thank you for joining in on this, on this worship time. Go ahead and drop your name in the chat. We have a host there ready to meet with you. And after that, please go ahead and find a seat. Get comfortable as we have an amazing video that's gonna lead us on with today's service. Happy Sunday, Next Level Family. I'm Pastor Brianna, and this is Pastor Lewis, and we are so glad that you're with us today. Our hope is that while you're here, you feel right at home. That's right, and if you're joining us for the first time, we wanna say welcome. We would love to get to know you. And in the seat back in front of you, there's a New Here card. We would love for you to take that card, fill it out, and bring it to the New Here, Start Here sign right after service. A member of our team looks forward to meeting you and give you a free gift for stopping by. <laughs> I and mean, I say this all the time, if it's free, it's for me. It's a blessing from the Lord, so hey, don't miss out on this free gift. And if you're new and joining us online today, we'd love to connect with you as well. You can text NLC New to the number 77411, and a digital New Here card will be sent to you. You can fill that card out, send it right back to us, and a member of our team cannot wait to get in touch with you and connect with you this week. Hey, Pastor Brianna, guess what? What? You haven't guessed. Oh. That's fine. Beautiful Conference 2024 <laughs> is right around the corner. That's right. Come on. <laughs> That's right. I really am so excited. And ladies, Beautiful Conference is coming up on May 10th and 11th at the Suncoast Arena. This year, we have two incredible guest speakers, Pastor Julie Mullins from Christ Fellowship Church and Christine Kane, who's the author, speaker, and founder of A21. You are not going to want to miss out on this. Oh, currently we're offering tickets at our standard pricing, but that pricing was gonna end on April the 28th. So we want to encourage you to get your tickets as soon as possible. For more information, more details about Beautiful Conference, you can register, all of that. You can do that by visiting nextlevelchurch.com slash beautiful. Church family, today is a very special day. We are celebrating our 10 year anniversary at our East Location. God has done incredible things in and through the East Location, and we truly believe that God is just getting started. That's right, it has been an honor and so amazing to watch God move throughout this location over the last 10 years. And we've seen so many people found, found people set free, and so many people have been empowered to step into all that God has for them. And we're just so excited and expectant for what God is going to do over the next 10 years at our East location. So hey, East location family, from all of the house, we love you and we're celebrating with you today. That's right, and that's all the news we have for you today. So let's put our hands together for our pastors as we continue on with our services. Well, welcome once again to Next Level Church. If you're excited to be here, say yeah. Come on, we're excited that you're here as well. My name is Pastor Josh, one of our pastors here, and uh, we're excited about Beautiful Conference. Come on, ladies, are you excited about Beautiful? Come on. And uh, this, this announcement, you guys had your announcement on the video, but this announcement is for all the guys in the room. Where's my brothers at? Come on, brothers. Hey, we want to invite you brothers to come out and serve at Beautiful Conference, and uh, I promise you're not going to want to miss it. This is one of the best times of the year for the sisters in the house, but also for the brothers in the house as well. I look forward to it all year long because I get to hang out with my brothers and I get to serve the women of our church. Around here, we just believe that real men serve women. Come on. And so here's what I'd love for you to do, brothers. I'd love for you to pull out your phone and scan the QR code that's going to be up here on the screen and sign up to serve at Beautiful Conference. I promise you won't regret it. We're going to have a credible time together, so make sure you do that. If you have any questions, our team will be out in the foyer afterwards to answer those. Hey, we're also really excited, probably most excited about Easter is next Sunday. Come on, we get to celebrate Jesus and the fact that he saved the world. And so I just can't wait to celebrate on Saturday and Sunday. We're gonna have seven services, identical services here at our Fort Myers location. And I wanna invite you to register you and your family today before you leave. So if you would, come on, pull out your phones. Come on, you're gonna go to Easter. So pull out your phones. I'd love for you to scan this QR code. And then we'd love for you to go ahead and register. If you call Next Level your home, we would love for you to actually not go to the 9.30 or the 11.30 because it is going to be packed here. And we wanna make sure there's room for everybody uh, when they come to be in this room to participate in the Easter service and to hear the gospel as well. And so I want to invite you to do that. And we're actually having a special service at 7.30 on Sunday morning, all right? Come on, we're going to have uh, like a sunrise service and it's going to be incredible, a family service. This service, uh, just this service alone, we're actually going to have our elementary kids in the service with us. And so if you want to come with your family, and we're asking all of you that call Next Level Your Home to come to this service as well to make room in the 
the other services. But here's the part that I left for the very end, okay? The best for the end. We're gonna have a waffle bar, bar at 7.30, all right? A waffle bar for your breakfast needs will be provided. It's gonna be awesome. But here's, here's you gotta be here for Easter, all right? Sign up to be a part of that. And if you haven't signed up to serve next week and you serve on a regular basis, make sure you do that as well. If you're here and you say, Pastor Josh, I wanna serve. I've never done that before. Sunday, Easter Sunday and Saturday are a great time to start. So you can sign up as well on that link. Uh, so make sure you do that. And then, hey, we're really excited because on April 7th, the week after Easter, we have our Empowerment Track. We've been having such a great response to Empowerment Track that we've added a second one in April as well. And it's been filling up like crazy. So you can pull your phones out. You can scan this QR code. Get signed up for Empowerment Track. You might be going, Pastor Josh, man, I just want to grow in my faith. I want to know more about Jesus. I want to grow in my relationship with Him. Or maybe you're ready to jump in and serve here at Next Level. This is your next step. So get signed up for your empowerment track. We have free child care and free lunch for you and your family to make it possible for you to be here on April the 7th. Make sure you do that. We're, we're going to continue our time of worship with the time of receiving of our tithe and offering over the next few moments. There's multiple ways to give here at Next Level. You can pull your phone out and scan this QR code and it'll give you some easy next steps. Or you can grab the offering envelope and the seat back in front of you. You can begin to prepare that now and have it ready to go out to offering stations that are in the back of the auditorium and out in the foyer as well. If you're participating online, our online host will help you with some next steps to be able to do that. And uh, while we're giving today, wanted to slow down and really just, man, what an incredible message last week, amen, from Pastor Lewis. Amazing, amazing message. And uh, really wanted to highlight the 90-day tithe challenge again. You guys have these cards on your seats. And uh, we learned last week that, that when we trust God with our finances, the first 10%, and so much more, but the tithe, that God brings a blessing and a protection over our homes and our families and our lives. And uh, so much so that we challenge you that if you're not tithing, that to take a step and to put God first and take the 90-day tithe challenge. And, and here's what the 90-day tithe challenge is, is really about, is this idea that we just trust God. We've seen him move in our own lives, and we've just seen it so many times in others, and we just believe that he's faithful to do what he says he's gonna do, amen? And so we believe that so much so that if you give over the 90 days and you don't see that blessing in your life, that at the end of those 90 days, we'll get back everything that you gave. That's how much we trust God. And more importantly, how much we want that blessing for you in your life. And so here's what we'd love for you to do. So many people already did. Pastor Matt's going to talk about that a little bit more. But if you want to take that step of faith, you can scan that QR code. You can fill that card out. Take those next steps. Or if you're here today and you say, Pastor Josh, I wasn't here last week. And I want to take the step of faith just to say, I'm going to continue to, to tithe. You can fill that card out and drop it in the offering stations as well. But we're just so thankful. We're so thankful for each and every one of you. And then I just, I want to pray. I want to pray for this offering. But so many of you that took the tithe challenge last week, you're given for the first time today. Come on, church family. That we just believe that God's about to do something incredible in your life. Yeah, come on, we can give it up for those who are trusting God for the first time. But come on, you, will you stand together across this room as we pray over this offering and as we go back into worship? I just believe that God wants to move, amen? And uh, I, it just seemed like that first part of worship that you were ready, that you were ready for, for God to move. But, but here's what I also believe. I believe that some of us, that we actually need to pray and say, God, I give you permission to move in that area of my life that I've been maybe holding off on. Because I just believe that the healer's heal, here, amen. Come on, let's pray together. Lord, right now we thank you. We thank you that we get to give, God, that we give with a heart of gratitude. Lord, we do pray for those who are giving for the very first time. We pray faith. God, we pray that you would move in a powerful way in their lives. And God, we do pray for this offering, God, that you would use it in a mighty way so more people might come to know you. Now, Lord, we pray for breakthrough, God. God, as we sing this song, Breakthrough, we declare that Jesus is in the room and that he's bringing healing and breakthrough right now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, let's worship together.
on this morning coming into the city. The Bible calls it the triumphal entry. And I love this about Jesus. Like, like I have this picture about what that triumphal entry would look like. And I love that our Jesus just does it different. He does it because he loves us and because he has something for us. 
Like I have this picture of like all these people and this band and, and these soldiers and, and all this stuff, but that's not what Jesus did. You see, the Bible says in, in Matthew 21 that he wanted to fulfill all prophecy, but he did it for a reason. It says this in Matthew 21, it says this, say to daughter Zion, see your king comes gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Jesus did it to show everybody that he came to serve, that he came to bring healing, that he came to take care of those who are hurting and broken, who had been waiting their entire lives. And this is what I want you to see. Listen, those people that day, their entire history of their ancestors had been waiting for this very moment for the Messiah to come, for Jesus to come, and the Bible says that they grabbed palm branches and they came out and they started to sing Hosanna to the Son of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I want you to see this. Hosanna, it means to save. And I just think in the same way that when Jesus rode in that morning, on that donkey, he's riding in this morning into this place where you've been waiting for so long to be saved. The healer is here right now. And this is what I love is that they shouted Hosanna. They didn't wait to see if he would save. They declared that he is my savior, that he is Hosanna. So come on, will you do the same? Come on, will you sing it out right now? Right now, if you need that healing, if you need that saving, right now, whatever it is, whether you know Jesus or you don't, right now, he's here for you. The saving you've been longing for is here. Come on, sing it out. Hosanna, Hosanna. Saving that part of your life that you didn't think was possible to be saved. Hosanna He's the one that brings dead things back to life again. Gives sight to the blind. He Hosanna saves us. He saves us. Come on. Come on. Do you believe that today? That the Savior is here? That He's bringing healing right now? Come on. Give Him praise. Come on. Lift your hands up to heaven as an act of saying, God, I believe that you're saving right now. Come on. Let's declare it right now. Oh, I see the King of Glory. I see Him coming in. Come on, I see the King. I see the King of Glory coming on the clouds with fire. The whole earth shakes. The whole earth shakes. I see. Generation rising up to take their place with selfless faith, with selfless faith. So we sing together, Hosanna, 
more time. Hosanna. Can we raise up our hands to heaven and sing together? Hosanna. Hosanna. house on Palm Sunday. Amen. Hey, before you're seated, look at somebody and say, Hosanna, God saves. Come on, tell them. Tell them, I'm glad I'm saved. Hosanna, God saves. You can be seated. You can be seated. <clears throat> well, hey, want to welcome uh, all of our locations around here at Next Level Church. We like to say that we are one house with many rooms. And so there's a whole bunch of us worshiping in a whole bunch of rooms. So welcome to our online family and our Cape Coral family. Welcome to Fort Myers, this room, and additional seating as well. So thankful you're here. And then a special welcome today. Come on for our 10-year celebration for our East location. East family, yes. My goodness, so thankful for you. So thankful that we get to worship together. It was 10 years ago this weekend that we went multi-site. We became one church in multiple locations. And Pastor Willie and the team, just so thankful for you and all the leaders uh, who've been so faithful through the years at our East location. We ain't seen nothing yet, gang. God is just getting started with what he wants to do east of I-75. Amen? Amen. Well, hey, uh, we are in the final installment of a three-part financial series that we're calling Financial Fitness. Everyone say Financial Fitness. And uh, for the last couple of weeks here, we've been talking about our personal finances around here at Next Level Church. At least once a year, we love to take some time where we, where we look into God's Word and we see exactly what, what the Bible has to say about how you and I handle our money. And so for the last couple of weeks, we've been doing that. This little three-part series called Financial Fitness, helping us get into better financial shape. And so uh, in part one, by the way, if you missed either of the last two uh, messages, part one or part two, make sure you go to our YouTube page this week and get caught up, watch those messages, really digest uh, so much of the content because we just believe it's gonna, it can be life transforming in the, in the area of our personal finances, amen. So in part one, one, I kicked off the series by talking about what financial health looks like, and I kind of channeled my inner professor because I love to teach this stuff, uh, what the Bible says about personal finance. And then last weekend, my goodness, Pastor Lewis's message on tithing and the, the visual illustration. Yeah, come on. Wasn't it just amazing? Man, Pastor Sarah and I watched that message together this week, and we were like, yeah, like I was like so compelled. I'm like, this is one of the most compelling things ever. So again, if you missed last weekend, you've got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to watch that. It's amazing. But as for today, you know, church, I really was praying and I was just, you know, seeking the Lord saying, God, what, do, you know, what do our church need? Like, what do they, what do they need? And I just sensed in my spirit that when it comes to personal finances, what, uh, what I felt the Holy Spirit whisper to my spirit was, Matt, the church needs a boot camp. So today, church family, we're going to the gym. Today, church family, we're going to encounter what I want to call Billfold Boot Camp. Come on, say it with me. Billfold Boot Camp. Now, I know some of you who weren't children of the 80s, like some of us in the room, you're going, Pastor Matt, uh, what's a billfold? Okay. Well, once upon a time, there were these things called bills, like dollar bills, K, okay, and you had to have a place to put them. So this is a billful. It's like, it was like this, this is an old school Cubs wallet. Come on, somebody. This is my billful. And once upon a time, the government used to issue these things called dollar bills, and they actually called them legal. In other words, you could pay with them. Like you could actually pay for stuff with actual paper money, not just like with scans and taps and credit card stuff anymore. Like, well, you had to have a place to put those dollar bills. And so you had what was called a billfold, okay? So today we're going into a billfold boot camp. But if any of you were children of the 80s or remember the 80s like me, you don't just remember billfolds, you remember 
that when it came to this idea of fitness, there were people, many of them in fact, who inspired us in a new way as it relates to our physical fitness. And so, you know, I got to thinking about this and, and I got to thinking, you know what our church really needs is they need to be inspired. And so uh, if, if it's okay with you guys, you know, I really, I kind of want to channel my inner, I'm not going to say his name, um, but you know, there used to be this guy who would wear, who would wear red t-shirts and he, you know, he, he would motivate us. He would wear a headband and sweatbands. And there were others like Jane Fonda and others, you know, that just really wanted to, to motivate us, you know. And, uh, and so, so, you know, I thought to myself, don't worry, I have shorts on. <laughs> that what the church really needs is to be inspired in an 80s kind of way. So if it's all right with all of you, let me lace these bad boys up here for a second. If it's all right with all of you, I'm going to be, for the next 30 minutes or so, your financial fitness coach. It's time to sweat a little bit. And what would a good coach in the 80s be without some chalk? So I got my digital chalkboard today because I want to give us some exercises because I'm looking around and I'm seeing some slacking out there. I'm looking around and I'm thinking, oh, you may have been to CrossFit. Okay, well, I've never done CrossFit, but I did have lunch this week with a guy who's done it once or twice. <laughs> so there's that. You may be all physically fit and thinking you're awesome. Well, I want you to know something. Financially, you need to work out. So today, I want to give us six exercises. Everyone say six exercises of how to get financially fit this year. And so we're gonna have some fun, obviously, but uh, I want us to, to look at what the word of God says. And here's the reason why, because church family, whether we realize it or not, and Pastor Lewis mentioned this last week, the Bible has more to say about money and, and our stuff and possessions and stewardship and generosity, more to say about that than faith, than prayer, even salvation, all of those things combined. There are over 2,000 verses in the Bible that have to do with our money, with our possessions, so apparently, God cares a whole bunch about how you and I stay financially fit. So let me give you six exercises. Here's exercise number one. Everyone say, number one. Come on, you can do better than that. Number one, you got to face reality. You got to face reality. If you're going to get into a gym, you got to face reality. The first step, I already think they put those mirrors all over the place because we don't have an accurate picture of what we really look like. When you walk into a gym, you look in a mirror. Why? Because the trainer needs you to understand, hey, pal, it ain't as pretty as you think. <laughs> and listen, church family, what I've come to realize is, what I've come to realize is there's a whole lot of us who are following Jesus. We love God. But when it comes to our personal financial picture, it's not very pretty. It's not, it's not what we think it is. There's so many of us, we're living unconsciously from month to month, from paycheck to paycheck. And here's what the Bible says about it. Proverbs 27, let me show you this verse. Proverbs 27, verses 23 and 24 says, be sure you know the condition of your flocks. Of course, they're using an agricultural idea there, an illustration there, because they were in an agricultural culture, a society. So as soon as the listeners would have read this or heard this instruction, they'd have went, oh, I know exactly what it means. Look, be sure to know the condition of your flocks. Give careful attention, everyone say careful attention, to your herds. For riches, look, he cooks it together. For riches, do not endure forever, and a crown is not secure for all generations. In other words, we have to know where our money is going, or we could wake up one day and find ourselves in a place we never wanted to be. To say it like the Bible, we got to know what's happening in our field. So church, do you know? Do you know the conditions of your flocks? Do you know what's going on about in your personal finances? And it's, it's, it, 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 some of us, today needs to be the day where you quit denying reality and you finally face it. We need to face the facts, the reality of who we are. Why? Because the only way to change our reality is to admit it first. 
And married couples, let me speak to some, all of us who are married. We have thousands of married couples in our church. Let me speak to the married couples for a moment. Married couples, facing reality means getting on the same page. Too many couples never agree on what I would call their financial core values for their family. And they end up moving in two directions with their money. And as soon as we move in two multiple directions, we're never going to get ahead. We're never going to be able to live financially where God wants us to live. So let me ask you a question. With each of these exercises, I want to give you a question or two. Here's the first question. What are your financial core values? Do you know? What are our financial core values? Let me give you some examples. One example is like, we're going to give every dollar a name each month. Before the month starts, we're going to give every dollar a name. Here's another one. We're going to pursue the following things as the priorities first in our personal finances. Because husbands, some of you, in your mind, one of your core values is a weekly round of golf. And ladies, one of your core values is a weekly pedicure. Well, guess what? If we don't get these things aligned, we're going to be in trouble. So we got to decide what are our core values? Well, well, Pastor Matt, where would I even start? Like, how do I even find those? Here's what I would say. Go back to week one. What we talked about in week one, the information we downloaded and looked at from scripture in week one has the ability to set you and your family up with financial core values that you can say, this is how we're going to live in our house in terms of money. And let me just say for Sarah and I for 30 plus years, I'm so thankful that we have been on the same page concerning our financial core values, what matters most to us in our personal finances. And let me just tell you, it has made all the difference in our marriage, in our marriage, and in our financial lives for our family. It's made all the difference. So do you know what your financial core values are? Some of you, here's your homework. You need to go home, married couples, before the sun goes down tonight, you need to turn off all the stuff and turn off the TV and all of that. And you need to, you need to sit down at the kitchen table and look at each other and say, where are we financially really? Single people, some of you before the weekends, you need to get with a couple of your friends or some of your small group members you need to admit to someone, here's where I'm at financially. Remember what we talked about in week one? Financially successful people aren't afraid to talk about money. They aren't afraid to admit what they don't know and learn from others. Singles, some of you need to, some of you need to tell your small group leader. You need to tell your coach or your team leader or your, your a staff member here at Next Level. Why? Because there's help if you'll face reality. So if we're going to get a financial workout in the financial gym th- today, guess what? It starts with facing reality. Here's number two. Ever say number two? We got to get on the tithing treadmill. Come on, we got to get on the tithing treadmill. And last week, Pastor Lewis did such a masterful job teaching on the power and the principle of tithing. And can I just say, I'm so proud of so many of you who took the plunge this week. Dozens of next level families, you said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put God first with the first 10% of all of my increase, all my increase. I'm going to put God first. And I just want to commend you. I want you to know God's going to show up. He's going to show up in your life. So is the devil. The devil will try and fight you on this. Try and convince you, oh, well, you shouldn't do that. And try and get you to question your faith. Hey, I'm telling you, the word of God, it works, it works, it works. And thank you. Let me just encourage hundreds of us. We have such a generous church. Hundreds and hundreds of us who call Next Level Church our home. And you have, you've understood this principle of tithing in your faith for years, maybe some of you for decades. And I just want to commend you and say, way to not get off the treadmill. Way to just stay on the tithing treadmill. And and here's the challenge, though, I felt. This was Sarah and I. We started tithing when we were teenagers, and we've never stopped for 30-plus years. Never stopped tithing. Never stopped giving God the first 10% of all our increase. But I want to encourage some of us who've been on the tithing treadmill for years and you're like, yeah, I know, I just honor God with the tithe and it's good and it's just what I do. It's just part of the deal. It's great. I've taken the plunge like Lewis talked about and I got it. Here's what I felt in my spirit. It's time for you to increase the incline. It's time to up your incline. It's time to up the incline of the treadmill. For Sarah and I, we've been doing this for probably 15 years now where we've given, where we give above and beyond the tithe. Here's how we like to say it. We need to set giving goals. And so for Sarah and I, every single year, we set giving goals. The tithe, we return to the Lord. Giving after that, we have to set giving goals above and beyond the tithe. 
And so for Sarah and I, we've been doing this for probably over 15 years. And it was nine years ago, though, that the Lord really stretched our faith. And we set an audacious giving goal. We said, okay, we're going to have to sacrifice. We're going to have to figure some things out. We're going to have to cut some things. But we believe God wants us to give X amount, a percentage of our income. And can I tell you, God came through nine years ago. And he proved himself faithful. And it's been awesome. And so here's what we've done. We've said for the last nine years, that faith goal... Nine years ago is now our giving floor every year. That we don't want to go below that ever again. We need to set giving goals. Here's why. Because Sarah and I really believe in church family. We, do, we long as your pastors for you to understand that the Bible makes it clear that we have the ability in this life, our one and only life, to send ahead blessing for the next life. That, that we believe heaven and hell are real and we will spend eternity in either of one of those places. And we believe, for those of you who know Jesus, we will spend eternity with God in heaven. And so much of the reward, the blessing we will have in the next life for all eternity, this life's but a vapor, the Bible says. These 80 or 90 years are but a vapor. But eternity is forever. And the Bible shows us time and time again where we have the opportunity to store up treasure, the Bible says, in the life to come. Let me show you. This is Jesus teaching in Matthew chapter 6, the Sermon on the Mount. And he says in Matthew 6, do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Look at Jesus, his, his, his encouragement. But store up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven, where moth and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And here's why. For where your treasure is, Jesus says, there your heart will be also. And see, as teenagers, when Sarah and I began to learn this and internalize this while we were still dating, we said, if that's true, we want our heart to be on things above. We don't want to be consumed and captured and controlled by the things of this world. So we want to send our treasure ahead. Back in those days, we would have like guest speakers that would come to our church from time to time. And we would take up a, a special offering for them, you know, a love offering at the end of some of you remember those days. And we'd take up our love offering. And here's what we were taught. And we believe it's true. And I'm going to show you scripturally here in a minute. That, that the pastors would stand up and say, hey, listen, as you give tonight to this pastor, to this evangelist, to this missionary, to this missions organization, as they minister to people, everybody they touch, every person they touch and impact, it goes on your account. And so as young people, Sarah and I learned that, and we were like, well, then we don't ever want there to be an offering that we don't give in. Like every opportunity we have to be able to be a blessing, to send it on ahead, to get the credit. Let me show you Matthew chapter 10, Jesus talking again, verses 41 and 42. This is Jesus. And he says, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water, to one of these little ones who's my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. And as soon as we learned this principle of generosity, we went, man, we want to give. Like, like, how much can we give? Like, Lord, how do we organize our life in such a way that we give above and be the tithe? is just the beginning. It's just a treadmill that keeps you in shape, keeps your heart going. God, I want to give beyond that. And I'm so thankful. So many of you, you're doing this right now. Concerning kingdom builders in our downtown location, you're giving above and beyond. And by the way, our downtown location, construction is flying. It's coming together. Let me show you some pictures. I was able to take a tour this week. They're getting ready to put up the outside. Come on, it looks like our buildings now, doesn't it? Come on with the little with the arch thing. That's an empowerment track room. Come on, these are huge rooms, everybody. We bought a grocery store in Jesus' name. Let me show you. This is the auditorium from the stage looking out. It's going it's gonna be incredible. And here's what my here's my point. The point is when we give to a project like our downtown location, guess what? We're giving to the least of these, the little children, those who don't know Jesus yet, the thousands and thousands of lives that will be impacted in a building like that. Every dollar we give, it, and we've, as a church, given over $600,000 just since December. Come on, you guys. We're sending it ahead. We're sending it to heaven. And by the way, if you want to be a part of that, if maybe you're like, wow, how do I participate? How do I make that a part of my giving goals for 2024? Here's what I would say. Just go to nextlevelchurch.com slash for the city. 
And there's some more information about what we're doing that town or project. If you're new to Next Level, which we've got uh, several dozen new families who have joined us even since the first of the year, and we've been talking about this, go to that website. There's videos, there's more information, and we'll keep posting things there uh, as, as we go. So let me give you a couple questions on this one, on the tithing treadmill, this exercise. Okay, ready? Here you go. Are you putting God first with the tithe? And beyond that, for those of us who have been on the tithing treadmill forever, do you have giving goals beyond the tithe? These are questions, these are exercises for us biblically that God wants to continue to stretch us and grow us and help us get into better financial shape this year. All right, here, you, everybody doing all right? Is this helpful? All right, here we go. Exercise number three. I want to say number three. Number three, we got to do some saving stretches. We got to do some savings stretches. Come on, everybody. Let's talk for a few minutes about saving. There is no better feeling in the world than having margin in your finances. Think about it. Everything good in our life grows in the margins. And we think it's true relationally, isn't it? It's true emotionally, right? Like when we feel like we're just wall to wall and we have no margin, no space in our life, we just, nothing good can grow, right? We just, we're stressed out, we're just overwhelmed. And it's true financially. When we have margin in our personal finances, (laughs) <laughs> Red Bull famously has these commercials out right now that says, Red Bull gives you wings, right? You know what I wrote in my notes? Margin gives you wings. Margin gives us wings. Let me show it to you scripturally. We looked at this verse a couple of weeks ago, but I want to show you again. Proverbs twenty one twenty says this, In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. So my question to us is, when it comes to our personal finances, church family, are we devouring, consuming everything we have? Or are, are we being wise with it and actually creating some stores, some margins, some savings is how we would say it, right? So let me speak to those of us who maybe this is new information. <laughs> I got to take this off. I think it's squeezing my brain. But I need you to promise me that you'll remember what I look like. Because I'm working hard up here, people, okay? If, if I'm going to all this trouble. Got it. We good? Okay. Where do we start? Some of you, you, some of you you're like, you're looking at your finances. You're like, Pastor Matt, where, like, what, do I, what do I even do? Well, let me kind of channel my inner Dave Ramsey here for a second. I'll give you a few very, very practicals in terms of savings. Here's the first one. Number one, save $1,000 fast. Save $1,000 fast. Plain and simple. Save $1,000 fast. Sell stuff, cancel stuff, do whatever. And listen, in our world today, with Facebook Marketplace and eBay and all of that, it has never been easier to sell stuff. There is no reason why every single one of us couldn't or shouldn't have at least $1,000 in savings 30 days from today. I just, it just, I, I, well, I'm just telling you. So once you, there's nothing like having a little margin. $1,000. Then here's the second thing I would say then. Save one month of bills. So once you get $1,000 in your savings account, you're going to start to feel empowered, by the way. You're going to start to feel like breath in your lungs. Why? Because margin gives you wings, okay? Then here's the next goal. The next goal is to save one month of bills. For Sarah and I, when we were in our early 20s, we made a decision that we never wanted our personal finances, even all the way back then, 25 whatever years ago, to go below $3,000 in our savings account. We always, no matter what, wanted to have a minimum of $3,000 in our, in our savings or in our checking account. Why? Then, then we could save on top of that. We called that our new zero. And we said, 3,000 is our zero. And here's why. Because now you have the ability, third little point here, to borrow from yourself. To borrow from yourself. So now you become your own Visa card. So when the car breaks down or the air conditioner goes on the flip, you don't have to put it on a credit card and worry about it and pay high interest rates, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Instead, you borrow from yourself, your margin that you've created in your savings, and now you just pay yourself back first and you get right back to where you were. That's how you sleep at night, people. And then, as we're talking about savings, one final thought, you gotta save up to pay in full for big purchases. Save up to pay in full for big purchases. Save up to pay in full. For big purchases, for Sarah and I, we save up and pay for everything in full every single month. And eventually, get to the place where you can save up and pay cash for big purchases. One of our staff just this last year was able to purchase a car, an entire vehicle for cash. He and his wife, his family, they had saved up their cash and then an opportunity to buy this vehicle at a great bargain came on the, and he bought it and they were able, and now they don't have a car payment. Well, that's freedom. Doesn't that feel great, everybody? 
Here's how Jesus said it in Luke 14. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? That's the principle. That's the principle of sit down first. From the time our boys were young, we would teach them, boys, if you want to make a big purchase, they would you know, want to buy a new PlayStation or gaming thing or whatever. And we'd say, great, then let's work the plan where you give a tithe, save a tithe, live on the rest. That's been our philosophy forever. Give a tithe, save a tithe, 10%, 10%, and then live on 80%. If you can do that, you'll always be successful financially. And so we taught that to our boys. You gotta save up your money before you buy this place. And we're gonna wait. We're not just gonna go out and just, well, then you pay mommy and daddy back. No, 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 no. That looks like and feels like a credit card. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? We can teach our kids this stuff, you guys. So here's the questions. For number three, do you have an emergency fund or do you have savings goals for this year? If so, what are they? These, I'm trying to help you. I wanna, we, wanna, we wanna biblically help you as your church. Why? Because it's possible to live in great financial shape and be financially fit in our finances. We just gotta do it God's way. Here's number four. Everyone say number four. We gotta do some budget burpees. Now, here's what I know. I know that many of you, as I've been up here in this get up, and you're thinking to yourself, Pastor Matt, why aren't you doing the actual exercises physically? We'd love to see you do that. Well, because I knew that this one was coming. And I really don't want to do burpees, okay? We got to live on a budget. And I know for some of us, we're like, oh, budget, oh, the B word, right? Hey, listen, here's the reality. The reality is every single one of us live on a percentage of our income. The problem is most of us don't, just don't know what it is. And see, we get a little freaked out by that word budget. And we're like, oh, it's so much work. And what do I, blah, blah, where do I start? Here's the deal. A budget is simply deciding in advance where your money is going to go this month. And here's the funny thing. We do this all the time with our calendar and with our time. How many of you, show of hands, come on, every, every location, East, Cape Coral, online family, and in this room, additional seating, you too, come on. How many of you live by a calendar? You have a calendar that you, show of hands, come on, put them up, come on, put them up, keep them up, keep them up, okay. Almost every single one of us listening to me right now, we live our life by a calendar. You know what your calendar is? My calendar is me telling my time where to go in advance. Imagine how chaotic and stressful our life would be if every day we just kind of let it happen and just kind of woke up and been like, well, if somebody wants to talk to me today, they will, right? Here's what the Bible says, Proverbs 4.26. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. It's a biblical principle for us to budget, to think ahead, to, be, to give careful thought to our paths. Think about it. Like for Pastor Sarah and I, we wouldn't be able to serve you as well as your pastors and be faithful to the calling that God has on our life without a well-organized and well-prioritized calendar. And we wouldn't be able to serve you well as your pastors without a prioritized and well-organized budget for our church and for our personal lives. That's how we serve you well, why? By getting ahead of it, by, by being, giving careful thought to our ways. And here's the good news, church family. It has never been easier with all of the online apps and everything. They literally now have apps that hook to your bank account that day by day, week by week can actually give you in on real-time feedback. You spent X amount eating out. You spent X amount on groceries. You spent X amount on your light bill. You spent X amount on your carpet. They, like in real time, it's never been easier. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, Am I living on a budget? Am I living on a budget? Am I telling my money where to go or am I getting to the end of the month hoping I got money left? Am I living on a budget? All right, here's number five. I got two more. I got two more exercises for us. Number five, we gotta do some credit card crunches. We gotta do some credit card crunches. If we're gonna get in physical, financial shape this year, we gotta do some crunches with credit cards. Question, how many of you would pay $38 for a Chick-fil-A meal? Come on, talk about it. Anybody? You love it that much, huh? Good for you. I wouldn't. Here's the reality. Some of us are because we have put a Chick-fil-A meal on a credit card and every month we're carrying a balance. We're still paying for a meal we ate months ago. See, we got to get wise concerning credit cards. We got to get wise. Let me show you. Proverbs 22 verse 7 says this, the rich rule over the poor. But, and the borrower is, what's the word? Slave to the lender. Now, let me, let, me, let me talk about this for a minute. Credit cards in our world today are a tool. 
that can either help us or injure us big time in our financial fitness training. Just like in a gym, right? If you go into a gym and you get on one of those machines and you don't know how to use that machine properly, it can bring some real damage. Like you can really hurt yourself physically if you don't know how to use the tool provided for you properly. And the same is true with credit cards. Listen, if you can use them and pay them off at the end of every month, then the whole points thing can be an added benefit. But if you can't, then they will injure your financial fitness really, really quick. Because remember, (laughs) there's a reason why credit card companies can advertise literally on every major sporting event in the world and give us 1% to 4% cash back. It's not because they're generous. It's because most people are being injured by the tool. Do you know how much marketing costs? They market literally on every sporting event in the world. Turn on a sporting event this afternoon. I promise you, you will see a credit card company advertising. Who's paying for that? If you're carrying a balance, you are. Now, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Um, Please don't hear guilt. Nobody teaches us this stuff. They just send us to the wolves. You go to you go to you start your first semester of college, and literally there's a dozen credit card applications on the desk in your dorm room because they're paying your university, by the way, to be able to market to you. Nobody's teaching us. This is why we gotta slow down and talk about this stuff at least once a year. Because we gotta help, because the Bible actually can speak to this. And some listen, if you're a slave to the lender right now, then you gotta get a strategy, okay? You gotta know what's your debt load. And here's the question, what's your debt load and what's your strategy for getting out of all debt? You can be different. You, can, you don't have to live this way. You don't have to live under the pressure and the burden of carrying credit card balances and trying to transfer this one with 28% interest to this one with 22% interest and then over here. No, 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 God has something more for you, church. Man, we taught our kids from the youngest of age, there's a difference between discipline and regret. There's a difference between discipline and regret. And when it comes to our money, we can either live disciplined or we can live with regret. So we taught our boys from a young age that it is way more fun, you guys, to live with discipline now so we have no regrets later. So what's your strategy for getting out of debt? We wanna help you as your church. And then here's the last one. Here's the last one. We're talking about six exercises we need to, need to do to get into fi- to get financially fit this year. Number six is enjoy it. Really? That's a thing? And again, I love this. Because contrary to what most people think, God is not in the business of keeping his children poor. God's not in the business of keeping us miserable when it comes to our money. It's actually just the opposite. One of my favorite passages of scripture in all of the Bible is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. And I may, I actually think the Holy Spirit is, is, is stirring my heart that I may write a book on this passage right here. Look what it says. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, Amen but to put their hope in God, who, look, richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment? God really gives us everything for our enjoyment? It goes on, though. Look, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. And in this way, this is it right here, right here. (laughs) This is the part I want to write the book on. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. That's the part that Jesus was talking about. Send it ahead. Look right here. So that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. God says there's a life you can live with your personal finances that is the greatest life of all. See, the problem is most people in our world today are just doing it wrong. Let me show you one last illustration. Go ahead. So there's two approaches. There's the world's approach to money and God's approach to money. Here's the first one. Here's how the world approaches money. Most people in the world, they start with enjoy it. I'm gonna do what I want. And then they go into credit card debt to enjoy it more. 
They have absolutely no budget. They have no plan for their money. They have no savings for their money. And then when it comes to generosity or giving, they would call it philanthropy or giving something to, to someone else. That's pretty low on the thing. And then, the, the, then they never face reality. This is how most people in our world, in our society, our country today, handle their money. Now watch, here's God's approach to money. You just flip it. You just flip it. God says, just turn it on its head, which is the six exercises we've just been talking about. Face reality, put God first, tithe, make sure God goes first, then save, then live on a budget. Don't go into credit card debt. And then guess what? If you do all of those things, do whatever you want. Enjoy it. He's given us everything for our enjoyment. And can I just tell you, in, literally in, in 30 years, church family, of Sarah and I living like this, it's the best way to live. We were talking about it this week, and Pastor Sarah and I, were saying, we literally said to ourselves, we could tell you dozens of stories of people that we have talked with, met with, prayed with on both sides. People who are miserable, people who are stressed out, people who are heart, experiencing heartache and misery, struggle and pain, why? Because they're trying to do it the way the world says. And we've talked to dozens of people on the other side. I love after every service, people come up to me when I preach on this stuff and they're like, Ellen, Pastor Matt, that's right, it really is bad. I'm like, yes! I don't know what else to do to compel you. <laughs> it's just the best way to live. So here's my question. Last question. Will you take God's approach to your money? Or will you keep trying to do it some other way? And you know, as a church, we're here for you. We want to help you every step of the way. I'm so excited. Last Sunday night... Pastor Yoli, our stewardship pastor, who we introduced you to a couple of weeks ago, she hosted an online forum on Zoom. We're doing another one of those tonight. Tonight, 7 to 8 p.m., one hour. I'm so excited, so encouraged that over 70 people showed up last Sunday night. Get on Zoom tonight. Here's what you do. Go to nextlevelchurch.com slash finances. The link is there. We can't give you the Zoom number because weird people do weird stuff on the internet because these messages go out everywhere. But we can send you to that website. The Zoom link is right there tonight. Some of you, you need to, you, this is your homework. You need to go there and be on with Pastor Yoli and our team tonight. We want to help you. We want to position you. It's Q&A format. You're able to interact. We want to help you right where you are. So let me ask you, what changes do you need to make to your personal finance in these six areas? What changes do you need to make to start to get financially fit the way the Bible says you can. Here's the point. You can be in a completely different place 365 days from right now in your personal finances if you'll do it God's way. If you'll do it God's way. You can be in a whole different place one year. Imagine your life one year from now. It's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. You're going to have to do some stretching. You're gonna have to get on the treadmill. You're gonna have to do some burpees. You're gonna, it's, yeah, it's, you're gonna have to sweat, sweat, sweat. But you can be different. The choice is ours. How will we live? God's way or some other way? So Heavenly Father, right now, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the truth of your word. God, I'm so passionate about this. Lord, I just wanna see every person who names the name of Jesus, every person who's planted in the house of Next Level Church, win financially. And so Jesus, I pray that today, you, Holy Spirit, would motivate them to life change. We can change our financial picture. We just gotta put in the work. Pausing in this moment, maybe you've come in to this place today, one of our locations today, or online, you're with us. And you don't know Jesus. Maybe you're here. You don't know Jesus. You can. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. All you have to do is acknowledge you're a sinner. Believe that what Jesus did on the cross was payment for your sin. We're going to celebrate that next week on Easter. And confess it. And if you'll do that, the Bible says that he'll he'll come in and he'll forgive you of your sin. He'll wash you clean. He'll make you a new creation. So right now, with every head bowed, every eye closed, 
I want to give you an opportunity to say yes. If you want to say yes, you've never accepted Jesus in your heart as your personal Savior, made him Lord of your life, but you want to, Pastor Matt, include me in. I'm going to count to three. When I hit three, will you just throw your hand up in the air and keep it up for a moment? One, two, three. Awesome. Thank you. Fantastic. Here's a whole row of people right here in the room I'm in. Anybody else? Awesome. Fantastic. Pastor Matt, that's me. Yes, Pastor Matt, include me in. I want to say yes to a relationship with Jesus. I need Jesus. I want him to be the Lord of my life. Thank you. Awesome. Other rooms, I know it's happening at East and Cape Coral right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. Hey, for the sake of so many who have lifted their hand today to say yes to Jesus, can you, will, can you all just repeat this prayer after me? Come on, and if you raise your hand, would you pray this prayer from your heart and God's gonna hear you and he's gonna come in and make all the difference in your life. He's gonna save you and forgive you. Let's pray together. Say, dear Jesus, thanks for loving me and bringing me here today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I'm imperfect and I need a savior. I ask you to save me. Forgive me, Jesus, of all my sin. Wash me clean. Make me a new creation in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Now, Father, I pray for each one of us, God, that this would be our greatest year financially. God, even though the economy and the election and all the stuff, Lord, doesn't matter, your word is true. And so God, give us the courage to do our finances your way. Put in the hard work. Do it your way. God, I bless your people. God, I pray that in the months to come, we're gonna hear story after story after story of so many people's lives, families, relationships, marriages, who've been turned around all because they decided to do money your way. I bless your people today in Jesus' name. And all of God's people at every location who agreed said, amen. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise. Hey, church family, before we continue with our service, I want to let you know we're going to worship together. I have a couple more announcements. We actually have about 50 people in additional seating, which is incredible. And so please, please stay in this room. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, stay in this room until I dismiss. But come on, would you stand to your feet? What an incredible message. Aren't you thankful that, uh, that the Lord cares about every part of our lives, that he has so much for us to enjoy, amen? And so I think it would be right for us to just respond and worship and just tell the Lord thank you for all that he's done. Come on, let's worship him right now. my soul. And I am free.
Gentiles, hey, before you move, hey, can we celebrate with all of heaven, all the people who said yes to Jesus today? Come on. The Bible says that all of heaven is rejoicing when one says yes to the Lord. Hey, I'm going to invite our prayer team to come out. And if you said yes to Jesus, we'd love to give you a Bible, a gift of just our way of saying welcome to the family, to be able to help you take next steps in your relationship with him, to learn more about him. And then, hey, I want to tell you the prayer team's going to be here out front. And listen, before you leave today, if you need prayer for anything, maybe a financial need, maybe a physical need, whatever it is, that you would come and you would get some prayer today. Hey, make sure you register for uh, Easter next Sunday. If this is your first time, we'd love to meet you afterwards. Besides that, we love you. We'll see you next week, everybody.